So, hello everybody, please sit down. Uh, I would like to remind uh, that uh, you can join the contest for cool prizes tomorrow. And um, please vote for lighting talks on this section. Our next uh, presenter uh, is working for Red Hat on OpenShift and Kubernetes. And he will tell us something about the benefits of transitioning from Java to Go. Please welcome. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm going to put it a little bit. Okay. Um, it's nice to see you that so many of you are interested in switching from Java to Go. That's very comforting <laughs> on, one, on one hand. I hope that this many of you will be still interested in doing so after my presentation. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, the title of my presentation is How a Java Dev Benefited from Transiting the Go, or in other words, that's Gopher versus Duke. I do hope you, you guys know uh, both of the logos. There's no cool story behind Go logo, unfortunately, so I won't tell you anything. They just wanted to have something, and they, they come up with a gopher. Okay, um, I'll, I'll try to uh, speak at the beginning a little bit about the benefits from transitioning. Then I'll do a uh, kind of uh, short comparison of the languages, mostly focusing on what Go gives you versus uh, what Java does not, and I'll try to summarize that thing. Um, but before I start, let me tell you, um, a little bit about myself. Why am I here in the first place? Why am I knowledgeable enough to speak about transiting from one language to the other one? So I've switched twice so far. Where switch, I really switch after working for a good couple of years from one language to the other. I first started with C, C++ over 10 years ago. After working for a company regard, uh, about uh, re on VoIP related stuff, I switched to Java uh, technology. And I stayed with Java for over seven years. And then two years ago, uh, Irka Folta came to me asking if I would not want to work for Red Hat. And um, although initially that was supposed to be Ruby, Thankfully, it turned out to be Go in the end. So there are two, there are two big switches that I've done uh, in my life so far. And um, I've also pointed out that I, I know Python. And Python is with me since my university. So that will be almost 15 years in, uh, in a year or something like that, uh, which is crucial because I have some dynamic languages interest in it, in my head, and, and certain things that I find useful in Go might come from uh, my, let's say, affection to dynamic languages. And as it was pointed out uh, earlier, I'm working on OpenShift for Red Hat. Okay, uh, when I started first thinking about this presentation, what I'm going to say what I like, what I don't like, I started thinking, but okay, that will be my opinion. But I would like to know what our folks think. And it appears that there are much more Java de developers, or X kind of Java developers, in the OpenShift team that I've ever expected. So I asked them what they think about switching from Java to Go. So they wrote me, don't switch. I miss debugging and knowing in my interfaces and generics and collections and good logging frameworks. I miss machine-driven refactors that just worked. And that was when we were doing some really serious refactoring on the way. And it was like two weeks ago. All right, uh, I asked more. So the other uh, friend of mine wrote me this. I do think that Go format, I'll be talking about it in a minute, was a brilliant move. Having to never think about those issues has been awesome. Those of you who are using Eclipse and have automatic formatters might have a clue or might suspect what, uh, 
what this might be. Okay. Uh, and, and one other, Romy, I miss it. Uh, there's plenty I miss about JVM. And what he says, that he secretly loves Java, pretty much everyone says exactly the same thing. So, having said that, how many of you is Java devs? Okay, more than a half a room. How many of you have more than one year experience in Java? Okay, all, all of you. How many of you have more than five years experience of Java? Yeah, mostly, mostly. Okay, that's nice. More than 10 years out of curiosity? There are a few. That's impressive. Awesome. Okay, but we're gonna do Go. So, what I like, and this is totally subjective opinion. This is what I like about Go. I really like the types. They are simple, they are expressive, there's no magic behind it. Um, I like syntax of Go because it's very readable and, and it, it, it points you somewhere between Java, C, kind of like that. Uh, I really like the data structures. I'll be talking about that in a minute and interfaces and how they work. And this is a little bit of magic there. Uh, uh, the concurrency. The concurrency is built into language. The concurrency, I would even say, is a first class citizen in the language, which is very crucial for building on top of that. Um, there's uh, built in into the language testing framework or a package that is provided by the language. There's a garbage collection and memory management, so that is familiar to pretty much every single Java developer, right? Hopefully. Uh, okay, what I feel uh, about Go is the package, the code organization. Go organized code similarly to what Java does. What Java does is you usually do com, uh, that my company, that my super project, that my package, and et cetera, et cetera. So, Go is similar, but instead of my company, dot com, whatever, whatever, it uses uh, the source repository name. So my, uh, 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 my package, if I uh, put it up on GitHub, will be called github.com slash, my nickname, Saltis, that was couple slides before, uh, slash name of my project, slash name of the package that I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm showing. So that is similar. So I, yeah, kind of. The error handling, the error handling, I'll be showing that in a moment, is uh, I still not sure if I like it or, or not, so I put it in the neutral zone. And so that it's not superb and always, there are some quirks in Java. Uh, and Go, or of course in Java as well. Uh, so the biggest problems every single person will tell you about when start working with Go is the dependency management. Strictly speaking, because there's none. And the other what I wrote, oh, the bugger. <laughs> How many of you use Java debugger? With Eclipse? Right, mostly IntelliJ or whatever. So generally speaking, you know what I'm speaking about. It's so just like, and I, I'm, I'm attached to any single process that's running either as a single on or, or in, um, or in a uh, remote machine or whatever, right? So everybody, every single person I was speaking to misses debugger. And I can totally understand why. So, having said that, let's let's jump in. Uh, I'll get I'll I'll get that. <laughs> Calm down. I'll I'll be. Uh, I'll shut you down with the uh, with the scarf. You're gonna have to for your partner. Uh, okay, you know everybody knows that, right? The hello world. That you you need to start with something. So. In Java, you, you need to write tons of words, let's call it that way, to have the, uh, the program print the, uh, the hello world for us. 
And then when I'm done with that, I need to do two magical commands to actually run it. I'm a CLI guy, so you know, I, I'll do that. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, but in Eclipse, you just press F11, F5, or whatever else, and it just works. No, nah, no, nah, I, I don't buy it. Um, you can't do Eclipse F11 on production or on a server. That won't work, right? We all do CI, CD, and stuff like that. I'm looking at everybody. Uh, so how it's done in Go. There's the uh, package declaration. It won't allow you not to do it. It will be a compilation error if you don't provide one. Uh, there's the import section, similar to what you have in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Java. Except that if you have multiple, in Java you'll have multiple import, the name, import, the name. They, are, they were smart. You don't have to repeat the, the import word here. You'll just do import, open a bracket, and then you name all the packages, close the bracket. That is, that is handy. You don't have to report uh, a, a couple of times. And there's the, uh, the function main. Is it simple, right? Like func main, can I write? Compared to public class hello world, public static void main string, I never could remember the, uh, the thing. Yes, there's Eclipse, I know. It will do that for you. But I'm, I'm using a very simple editor. There's like, most of us who are working with Go are either using Vim, or I'm personally using um, um, uh, Sublime. But these are really simple. They don't do anything for you. Just simple, uh, 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 simple uh, auto-repeat, that nothing, that's it. And there's more magic going on. How do I run it? I'll do go run main.go. That's it. There's no compilation, sort of. <laughs> go is smart enough that it will do that for me. So I don't have to. See, one again. I saved, I saved, I'm, I'm not gonna count how many words I've saved in the, uh, in the upper, but I've saved at least one command during the compilation just to run it. Nice, isn't it? Okay, um, but you might ask, why? Like, there's like tons of languages out there, right? So, th th there's a nice, nice quote if you go to um, uh, FAQ for the Golang, where they says, no major system language has emerged in over a decade. But over the time, the computing landscape has changed tremendously. So what they did? Let's build a new one. So uh, the, the three guys, really smart one. Uh, I, I highly recommend either reading their books or watching their uh, presentations, really worth it. So Robert, Rob, and Ken come up with uh, the idea that they want to have new language. The new language has to be fast. By fast, I mean it needs to be super simple and super fast to create new applications. Why? The market is very demanding. We want to write software faster. And if I write soft faster, I want to also it compile faster, right? That's obvious. Uh, there's no type hierarchy in Go. Uh, it's, and it's although Go is statically typed language, as I will show you in a minute, it is written in such a way that it gives you some freedom and it pretends to be lightweight uh, language in those, in those terms. Uh, they, they come up that the language definitely needs a good um, uh, garbage collection and memory management. Whatever was done so far is okay, but we could do better. Why not? Always, everybody says that, right? When somebody is trying to invent something new, it's like, I'm gonna do it better this time. Uh, um, yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, the language has a built-in uh, concurrency support, and it will target multi-core machines. Pretty uh, regular, nothing fancy with that. Interfaces, there are. There is no, there is no inheritance. It's, <laughs> it's you, you can. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that question. <laughs> Once I'll be talking about structures and interfaces, I'll, I'll try to address your question. But generally speaking, no, there's no inheritance. There are interfaces. 
but they work magically. Uh, so the types. You could generally uh, expect that a language will provide the usual types. So there's numeric types, which is int, uh, there's uh, int64, there's uints, and stuff like that. Uh, what you might find different from Java is that it, the, uh, the order of definition is switched. You first define the name, then the type, and then the value. Uh, these are all um, valid variable declaration. So in the first one is the, uh, the longest possible one. You got, you're not going to use it. Trust me. It's too much writing. Uh, the second one, what it does, it de declare a variable named age that will be an int, and then I'm assigning 35 to it. The, the third declaration, this is what you're going to use most often. Note there's a uh, colon before the equal mark. This means that I'm creating a variable declaring it at the same time. This is called the short declaration, uh, short variable declaration. What is cool about it, you don't have to specifically say, this will be an int, and then I'm assigning the int. The compiler is smart enough to know that this is what I'm assigning will be the type of the variable. You don't have to do it manually. Java 0.7 did that with, uh, with the diamond operator, kind of. So they went even further. Uh, on the right hand, there could be a, um, um, a function or a method or a structure, doesn't matter. As long as the compiler can introspect the, uh, the type, it will do that for you. Uh, there's one other quirk uh, about the variables in Go, and is that the, um, you cannot have unused variables. Something that usually Java people will find out with PMD or Textile, Go, Go compiler does that. You cannot have unused variables. It will complain about unused variables. But there's a solution to that. There's the underscore. So the underscore, I'm assigning age to underscore, which means I'm tricking you that I'm going to use that one. Uh, so that's, that's one, one option, or comment is the other option. Uh, the unused variables error warning in compilator also applies to imports. If Go compilator will, uh, Go compiler will find out that you have unused import, it will complain the same way. But sometimes you want to have the import to happen just to have the initialization of the model to happen. Then you use, so you will find pretty often, if you go, for example, through origin or Kubernetes code, you'll find modules being uh, prefixed with a underscore. Uh, additionally, there's RI, very simple, and maps, maybe a little quirky, uh, the, 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 the syntax declaration is, but it's not that bad. Although it, it, this, if you try to do maps of maps, then it gets quirky. You need to spend a minute or two to figure out what is actually where, but you can't have the, uh, the world ideal. Uh, going further, I, I think I need to speed up. Uh, type def, do you know what type def was in, in, um, in the C world? could generally speaking declare your own type. So Go does exactly the same. I can define that my type by size will be a float64. Then I'll, I'll, I'm going to define some uh, constants. The IOTA, that is cool stuff. No, nobody has that one. No, no other language. It, you can use that to create enums. It will be uh, first used, it will use number zero. And then each, each time it will be used. See? It is used in MB, in megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. You see this? It's empty, right? That's the magic of Go. It will do that for you. Uh, it will, generally speaking, copy the last statement a couple of times. You don't have to do it manually. It will, it will do that and create the enums for you. Uh, speaking further, the RI. You use it as normally in, in Java you would. Uh, there's one additional structure that was introduced in Go. 
because by default Java arrays, uh, Go arrays are not uh, are not modifiable. You cannot modify them. Uh, so there are slices. Slices is a direct access to certain amount, uh, certain area of, uh, of 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 data of an array. So for example, if I create a slice from my array one to three, that will be a that will be a, starting from first element up to three, but in, uh, exclusive. The first, one in, 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 the first one is inclusive, the third one is exclusive. To be easy. No, but the, uh, this formula is used uh, in other languages. If you're gonna go uh, uh, play with Python, it is used over there, so there's nothing new. Uh, Can you go one back? I think so. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, so this is a pattern that is uh, generally applicable. So indexing is still from zero? Yes. If you define some or slice? Slice. No, you, if you define a slice, you will access the slice by their indexes. So for this slice, index zero is the two. Index three, you can think of it as a as a substring, as he told you, kind of. It's like a subarray. The name slice is just, just that. That basically means just that. Um, skipping fast forward. Uh, conditionals, there's nothing magic about conditionals, except for one thing. As you see, there are no parentheses around condition. You can have them, nobody will tell you not to. But a go formatter, if you run the go formatter over your code, it will be removed. It's not needed. Even if, if you have multiple uh, uh, conditionals in an if, not needed. But the curly braces, they're always needed, even more. The curly braces has to be at the same line the condition is. If you put the curl braces below it, it will be a compilation error. So, yeah. Um, the second, the second, the second, uh, uh, the second piece of code, what you can see is, you know, if you do for loop, you can uh, use that variable inside of the loop and not, not nowhere more, you do the, uh, uh, variable declaration, condition, and incrementation. Here you can create and check immediately the variable. So you, generally speaking, check a file, you get an error, you check if the error is, uh, is not nil, and you do something with the error. That means the error will not exist outside of the scope of this, uh, of this block. How it is used? For example, when you access a key in a map, uh, that operation returns two, two values. The first one will be the actual value. The second one is whether the, uh, the key existed or it not, or does not exist in a, uh, in a map. This is needed because sometimes default values, uh, oh, let's say, call, I'll, I'll say it differently. You're gonna get here a default value always, even when the key did not exist. It. So, exa for example, if I have um, um, int from one to ten, and I'm gonna get 11, 11 key, and I'm gonna be expecting some value, I'm gonna get zero, but the key was not found. The zero is not a proper value, so you should check the OK, actually, for the existence of the key in a map. More or less, I hope that's clear. I'm gonna throw you at you a couple more um, stuff like that. Uh, there's four loops, and that's it. There's no do while. How many of you were doing this uh, quirky uh, exams that you need to switch from during your exam at the university? This is do while. Now we wrote the do while as a for loop or differently, or the other side, right? Nobody does that. So the, the Go creators come up with 
we don't need do whiles because basically whatever you need you can do with a simple for loop so that's what I have I have the for which looks exactly the same like in Java except for there's no parenthesis around the, uh, the, the first line right simple as that I can uh, there is a range operator. That's cool. There's nothing like that in Java. But there are stuff like that in, uh, in Python, for example. This is what I like. This is what I was talking about. That I, there are certain things that they did. Uh, they took from dynamic languages, Ruby, Python, and others, and they introduced into, uh, into Go. So this is one of the things. You can uh, range over a map. This is generally speaking for each. Well, you're getting by, at, with one operation key and the value. What is tricky is that if you go through array, you're going to get two values as well. One will be the index, and the second will be the value. And if you, if you don't assign the second value in the for loop over the array, you're going to get just the index. It's not a compilation error, because you can get just the first one. The same applies to map. But you won't get the value. This is tricky, and I know that a couple of folks uh, 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 fail, had some problems with it. <laughs> Seriously? I'm going to skip QA. Um, <clears throat> they can always catch me afterwards. Uh, the, switch ma uh, the switch is simple. There's no magic in it. I'm going to speak faster. Uh, so the, the, the upper switch is normal like in everywhere else, except for one thing. Generally speaking, in Java, what you do is that you, in every case, you do break at the bottom, right? Because you all know that, right? That the default behavior is if you enter in a, a case, it will just go fall, fall through the, from that point. So uh, Go does not that, do that. But if you want to have that behavior so that the case is a, an entry point and it will go full, uh, through all the cases, there's a keyword, fall through. But who used that? I personally, over more than 10 years, I haven't seen a code that is actually using that functionality. There were always breaks at the bottom. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing, you can actually put the conditionals inside of the case. This is not possible in Java, right? I think at least it wasn't two years ago when I... Uh, one other interesting construct is a type switch. You can check the type of a um, variable passed over an instance with a switch. Uh, one additional comment, it is very endiomatic and go to, uh, to, to, to use switches instead of ill files very frequently. Uh, function definition, I'm going, I need to, Jesus. Too much of it talking. Uh, cool thing, you can return multiple values. There is nothing like that in Java. I've always hated it. I did nasty hacks. What I did, it was like, define a array of these things because then the first element is, it does mean this, the second element means that, and the third element means something different. That was so hacky and it was so bad. And I, I, I shouldn't even speak aloud that I did that, but I did. Or you could create your own object. Like seriously, I'm gonna create an object just to return two values. Thankfully there's a, uh, key value that you can somehow hack over. I usually ended up creating my own, uh, my own type that, that allows me to pass to two elements. Here I can pass as many as I want. Okay, uh, skipping further. Uh, even more, the, uh, if you define a function, you can name the parameters, right? That's what you do usually. But with Go, I can even name uh, the return variables. What it gives me is that I'm going to have those variables assign default values, which will be for result, it will be an empty structure, for error, it will be nil. And I'm going to use this. But here, I'm finishing. I'm not even writing what I'm going to return. Go is smart. And it will take the last values of these two variables, and it will put it for me here. But uh, I don't know. Not, not that frequently used. Uh, since functions are uh, f first class citizens in language, you can assign them to uh, uh, two variables. How many times do you have to write just one function 
to satisfy an interface, to pass an object to a function. Oh my God, it's like, okay, the, uh, what's the, the I'm like, gonna run? The thread is the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the, 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 the runnable, you just need to run, type run. It's like, thread, run, and you need to type, yeah, implements are uh, runnable, there's the almost anonymous class inside of it. No, you don't have to do that with here. I'm gonna just pass the function whatever I want how, and how I want. And here's the error handling in Go. There's no condition, uh, there's no exceptions, unfortunately. So this is what I think, I'm still not sure. Uh, here, the OS open path will return the file object and an error. And this is very idiomatic code. You're gonna find this tons and tons of places. They're gonna return either an object and an error or just an error to notify that something went wrong. And there's, some, and there's more cool stuff. The defer. That is awesome. How many times have you forgotten closing a file? Closing a socket? Closing connection to DB? Whatever? None of you? I don't believe you. <laughs> I've done a couple of times by myself. So what they come up with is that right after I open a file, I'm gonna say defer. So put it for later. If I close. This will happen at the end of the function. And it will know how to close the file because it will just close this one. It doesn't matter how many returns I will have down the road, it will do that for me. Even more, you're gonna have multiple defers inside a, um, inside a method. <laughs> yeah, I was given hard limit. Was, how many times? Sorry. 24, 35, that means like, and a minute per slide. Uh, so the defers, this is a tricky, I got bit by that later, or earlier today, is that they are uh, executed in uh, last in, first out order. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, structures, okay, so you have classes in Go, uh, you have classes in, um, uh, in Java, you have structures in, uh, in C, or, or, or Pascal, if you ever program that one. And this is generally speaking kind of like a class. You just define the, the field they wanna have, and that's it. I'm gonna create my structure with the new keyword, or I'm gonna just initiate it as a, an empty. Uh, the new keyword cr um, allocates the memory and creates a pointer, initialize it with zeros, and creates a pointer for me uh, to my structure. Or you can just this and I, Jesus. Uh, go will and go. Generally speaking, initialize everything for me. So that's super cool. You don't have to worry about those. There are uh, uh, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, the maps, channels, and uh, there's some more, one more slices. Yeah, you need to use make because there are underlying structures that he needs to uh, initialize for you. So the the, the make keyword you're gonna use that one a couple of times. Interfaces, that will be address your questions. Here's my interface. And this is how I implement the interface. See, my struct implements the interface. You don't know how? You don't? Because, I'm not gonna say, because you have glasses, I can't say you're blind. That would be mean, but I will. Look carefully, set string error. Funk, set string error. That's it. This is how you implement an interface in Go. You just uh, implement, the uh, implement the methods that are named in an interface, and that's it. Now I can use uh, my struct as in my interface. That's it. This is very, uh, this is very uh, crucial because you'll find a lot of small interfaces, one method, two methods, from which we will actually compose. So there's no inheritance. You know what I can do? I can embed. You know how? I'm gonna put either inside my structure the name of the interface as a variable, then I will have to prepend the variable to access that, or not even using that. And that means that I'll have the, uh, the structure embedding inside of my structure. The same applies for interfaces. Yeah, more or less. 
OK. Oh, I'm going to, how many times? Five minutes or else? Yeah, six. OK. I'm going to go quickly through uh, 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 concurrency. That is the biggest problem, and I have like six minutes to, co to cover that. How many of you have problems with concurrency? Problems with writing proper concurrent code. I don't believe you. You're lying me again. Uh, so that is a pain in the ass, isn't it? So uh, they come up with the slogan, do not communicate by sharing memory. Instead, share memory by communicating. They come up with something that is called go routines. And these are cheap. Trust me. These are super cheap. You can run 100,000 go routines on your computer. You won't, you won't even feel that one. These are similar to coroutines in Python. It means that, generally speaking, if you run a coroutine and it will be blocked by, I don't know, I.O., whatever, uh, the go runtime will switch because uh, there are not that many threats, system threats, as the coroutines there are. So it will be switching context between coroutines so that it can feel as you have that many power. And these are really, really cheap to launch. This costs a couple bytes on a stack. That's it. Nothing more. So how you run a go routine? You prepend a function with the go keyword. That's it. It will close itself. You can do whatever you would with it. Uh, quick, uh, quick skim through channels. Channels serve uh, for synchronizing and go. You can have two types of channels. Channels can be unbuffered, which means whatever I send can be immediately available on the other end, or they can be buffered. You can use the buffered one for um, synchronizing, creating semaphores, some limiting throughput. Uh, but that's rare cases. Usually you use unbuffered, which means I have one goroutine going down, I have the other one goroutine. This goroutine is going to send. This goroutine is going to go, 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 go. This one's guy waiting, because I'm trying to send, but nobody is still, nothing is getting from the other uh, goroutine. It goes, okay, it reaches, it reads, I unblock this one, and I can unblock this one. So you can use channel to synchronize. This is what, what was meant by the... Um, uh, yes, exactly. But these are very simple. In most of the, ca in most of the cases, you'll end up using just the uh, channels for your entire synchronization. That doesn't mean that Go does not have others. Uh, other primitives. There's a uh, sync package. You can find semaphores, really advanced stuff. There's a uh, sync atomic package that you can have atomic operation and, and, and lots of really good stuff there. But the problem is that in most cases, uh, the channels will be enough for you. I can't even speak more. Here's a simple example. Uh, here, I'm using a channel so that, because by default, if you run a goroutine and main, it will just exit. Doesn't matter. It won't wait for the goroutine. It's a dif dif uh, different goroutine. So if I want to have in the main to wait for uh, for the goroutine to end, I'm generally speaking, I'm, I'm sending one to channel, and I'm and the main program is waiting for this channel to be received. It's a little bit quirky at the beginning to get used to uh, reading and uh, sending value to channels, uh, especially if you're trying to send a. There are receive and send only channels which makes a little bit complicated stuff. But as the name suggests, it's, it's OK to use those. Um, so sometimes there are multiple hours, and these are sometimes hard to parse. But on the other hand, it's really cool. Uh, the testing package. Uh, okay, I thought that somebody was asking me something. The testing package, uh, it, has, it is build and go. What you do is you write, uh, let's say I have a main that go. You usually end up with main um, underscore test go. Uh, the tests are in the same directories are uh, as the main pack uh, as the main program. So there's no source test source uh, source Java like in, in, in Java, but you rather have both at the same place, which is handy. Uh, and they are not placed in the final binary. That's very important as well. Uh, how you write a test? You prepend your function with the test keyword, and you pass the uh, testing.t, which has some uh, values that you might use for uh, logging, um, uh, erroring functions, and stuff like that. Uh, yes, that was a pointer. I, I, I didn't have enough time, and I have like one minute left. And I, 
I, I, I want to, this is the, the, the last part. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. This is the last part. So this is what I don't like about Go. This is Go dev from our uh, origin code. You want to guess how big the code is? How big this file is in origin? We have good couple, couple, good, good couple uh, dependencies inside of uh, Go. This file is 1,600 lines long. It specifies the import path and the version, and we keep the entire subrepo kind of like under our, if you go to the um, orig, OpenShift dash origin repo, you'll find a godeps, that's a godeps.json file, and underneath you'll find uh, underscore workspace, underneath you'll find all those packages that we vendor. That is so wrong. The debugger, La one, one, last, one, last, one last thing, and I'll, I'll answer other questions. Debugger, yes there is, thanks Derek Parker. Unfortunately, it's like GDB. So this is a session from a debugger. I was trying to launch one program and debug it. So as you see, it's very nasty. There's no something like Eclipse or stuff like that. That is so not cool. And the biggest problems are goroutines. The goroutines are super cool to write, but at the same time, they're super hard to debug. Having said that, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be at the lobby or something like that. I can always ask more questions. Thank you, Maciej. I have a quick announcement. Uh, there will be no lightning talks here, but there will be lightning talks in the D section. And you still have, I think, 10 minutes to go vote there.